Hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and ignoring the idea that our water has been off since earlier this morning, again, it's actually not been a bad day. Uh, we're at nine, so we're doing jazz again. So I've been seeing some pretty interesting ideas for for builds on my Discord. And I'm very grateful for that. I'm always ha always happy to see to see some of my ideas take off, and even other people's ideas coming into their own on my on my Discord. And I'm happy to I'm happy to see it. Now, this build that I'm going to be putting together isn't one of those builds, but keep in mind that. Then that I am probably going to be doing some of those. Some, <clears throat> I'm probably going to be using some of those ideas and just trying them out and seeing what I think. No, today I had the idea that I would like to try a build that's essentially all about shielding. And why is that? No real reason. Sometimes you just get a wild hair up your ass and you decide you want to give something a try. So today's try is going to be all is going to be all about using arcana that have shielding effects. And actually There we go. We're going to do kind of like a weapon shield thing. So we're like matter of fact, let's make the Make the comparison super apt and wear a crown. So now we are essentially a knight wielding a whip. Maybe a little awkward, but then again, who's to say that a knight can't wield a whip or that thing that Ivy wields in Soul Calibur? Which, to be fair, yes, I do know what it's called. In Soul Calibur, she calls it a snake sword. And in Castlevania, there's something similar called the Whip Sword. So, yes, I do know what it's called. I'm just, you know, not making a big deal about it. And I think, you know what? Let's just go and see what happens. Alright, so shoe, then... Then Atlas, then Zeal. All right. So, part of the reason why I wanted to do this is because a lot of these Arcana are just fun to use, but also because I have kind of a soft spot for this for this idea of kind of, of you know, attacking and counterattacking with stuff like that. So it's mostly that I just have a, it's just, I just have a soft spot for the, for this sort of arcana. Oh, hello. I don't know if I want to grab that or not. I kind of do, but at the same time, I would love to... I would like to also maybe diversify my elements a bit, maybe? Like, I'm looking at this, and the things that would make the most sense would be water for zeal, air for... Okay, this is kind of a mess. I'm in a situation where no matter what element I'm using, it's... It's going to be good on one, on one end of things, but not so good on another.
And what are you? Boots of Frenzy. Do I want this? You know what? I'll take it. Being able to have Wavefront with unlimited charges, even if just temporarily, feel would be kind of nice. And it's interesting that this this run feels like either an armored knight or a druid. So this this is a chance for me to talk to you guys about one of my about one of my more recent characters, and that was great timing on the wavefront. Um, ooh, I see two things here I want. And I know it's one, I know one of you had mentioned that I haven't been talking about my my D and D tales as much as I used to. I don't know why I why I had stopped doing that. I think. I think it was just some sort of like weird, weird habit where I just kind of started talking about other things and never really got back to it. But all the stuff that I have is giving me giving me thoughts of my of one of my most recent characters. And I may have told you guys about her, or I may not have, but she is a Circle of the Moon druid that I named Odette. Ah, that's a lot of Earth-based stuff. I would like I would like to maybe have something that's good against Atlas, but yeah, I kind of feel like the drill might be going a little far. Like I'm genuinely debating whether I want to pick that up or if I want something else. And Aqua Vortex is a strange one because then I've got Dragon Dive, which pushes enemies away from me. It's so weird. Or I could take Spark Array. Yeah, I'm a sucker. So the reason why this all brings me back to Odette is because her her primary weapon of choice is technically fighting unarmed. Oops. But one of the cantrips that she most frequently uses is thorn is thorn whip, which just creates like a viney whip that she uses to lash out at enemies with. As for as for which character race I chose, she is an Amethyst Dragonborn. Why Amethyst? Because they have a very unique breath weapon. There, now I have a shortcut. And that breath weapon is essentially they. Sorry, I got distracted. But that breath weapon is essentially just a... For the, the best way to describe it is it's essentially a purple blob that just explodes dealing force damage. Which means that you literally have a dragon that breathes grenades. And I really liked that idea, so I'm... Ooh, 
So I just went along with it. Later finding out that Amethyst Dragons also have another also have another interesting ability in innate psionicism, so kind of accidentally created a character that has access to a lot of a lot of different talents. Um, I don't think I want Spiral Rumblers. I might want Vortex Veil. Let's go ahead and grab this now. And that'll be something that I can use in the next level. As far as the Circle of the Moon Druid, my idea was initially to create a character, to create kind of a frontliner druid. So what she would be doing, and still does, frankly, is things like give herself temporarily, like, like form a form of a silverback gorilla to perform powerful, like, just big old punches. Which you probably didn't need me to explain that part, but, you know, there you go. Oh, I just remembered. Okay, I don't necessarily want to give up the shield. Alright, so here's what I do. Alright, gonna move Vortex Veil up here. Grab Ward of Flames. Then we will talk to Dr. Song. Hopefully she takes Dragon Dive so I can just grab the upgraded version. Cool. Alright. And the elixir of might is a great is a great find. And no, I didn't want any of those relics. Even though the water cushion would have been nice. I'm not going to make a big deal about it. That didn't turn out too badly. No thanks, I don't want fiery punches. Now, what ended up working out kind of unintentionally is that because she's a druid, she actually has access to quite a bit of magic. And... And we are currently playing that game in kind of a... in kind of a low magic world. So she's kind of... she's kind of unintentionally become the epicenter for... for all things, you know... Mystic.
So, what that does is kind of gives her a dual role within the group. It means that she is perfectly capable of, of fighting in melee range, but because she's the group's basically only spellcaster, she also has the distinction of of being a of being a healer when the when the need arises for it. And you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. I've never once had a qualm with being with being a healer in in, in our D and D games. But I also don't necessarily want that to be to be her only role. So what ends up happening? Anytime I do create a character that has healing magic, is I'll try to find a way to give them a give them a dual purpose. Okay, well, I still have plenty of need for money for the run, so I'm going to take the Anchor of Burden. And I should probably take the portal back. This does mean I can go ahead and upgrade this without worry. Which means stronger shield. Hooray! Oh, I actually somehow went through the entire floor without realizing it. Good job, me. And I don't... Actually, I will take this. So, the last few times I've created characters that have healing magic, I also create them either with some form of offensive magic or with an ability to an ability to fight so that they have things to do when when they aren't needed for healing. So, in the case of Odette, she also has the ability to fight. And in being Circle of the Moon Druid, she can she can use her shape shifting far more far more regularly than other druids can. So that'll allow me to do things like take partial, huh? take partial shape shifted shapes. But more often, what I'll more often than not, what I'll do is use use some knowledge of natural biology to create weird shapes. And when I say weird, I I don't necessarily mean like you know trying to skirt the rules and go outside of the natural rules of what of what you can actually shape shift into. Thanks, up button. It's exactly what I wanted. <clears throat> what I mean is, I'll choose very specific examples. Like, Silverback Gorilla is one of them. I could just say Gorilla, but why choose Gorilla when I can be ultra-specific about it? And during a recent...
And during a recent scenario where where we were involved in in some sort of crazy high-speed boat chase, I was in order to cut down on the number of boats we needed to keep afloat and stable. I thought this would be a good time to break out form of a shark. I don't remember exactly what kind of shark I chose, but I know that it's I know that it gave some very interesting movement and offensive options. And I'm always all for that. I am losing my mind here. I can't seem to do anything right. And I am just finding no useful relics. But I will also say that as enemies are getting more aggressive, it's getting harder and harder to use shields. Like it's harder, to, it's getting harder to use them by by merit of the enemies being a more being more aggressive. Okay, there was supposed to be a shield there, but the game said no. So, I think what I'm trying to say is that it's getting harder to use the shields intentionally. Okay, that ate through my shield pretty hardcore. Why did I dash away from the thing moving towards me? One form that I have never taken with Odette is form of a hippopotamus, because I I can't imagine being that full of hatred for the world. Um, interesting, but not for this run. Though one of my viewers did come up with something on my Discord that uses entangling vines that I'm mighty interested in trying. Okay, I'm actually seeing things I want here. So we're gonna grab this. We're gonna grab this. Yeah, that time I intentionally used the shield to good effect. The other thing about that character that worked out very well is that 
our so our group is particularly small. It's just me, my me, our DM, and one other friend who plays. So. So our one other buddy who plays with us chose to play chose to play a dragonborn fighter. And it just so happens that because both his character and Odette are dragonborns, it created created this sort of interesting camaraderie between the two. And it's weird that they both ended up being frontliners, so it's good that Odette has kind of this dual purpose within the group. Because otherwise it would otherwise things would be getting a little stale. All in all, I'm happy with the way our group dynamic has turned out. Stygian turtle shell. Um, yeah, I think I like it better than that. these narrow ass I hate these small ass rooms with the spikes in the corner. particularly itching to get my hands on. You can kind of argue that Water Prison is like a shield. I would like it if my spells were to come out when I ask them to come out. going so great. Let's see, do I want the Sleepy Thunderstone? Maybe not this time. I think I want to stick with what I have just to... Like, the worst thing I have is the Boots of Frenzy, which... I mean, to be fair, it won't... They don't help out all that much in boss fights. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. Oh why I didn't just go back to the portal and head south from there, I'll never know. Okay, shields actually came in useful there. I mean, they've been coming in useful at other points in the run, but I'm just pointing out that I was 
that my complaint about about how it being difficult to use the shields intentionally is a little unfounded there. Got anything good for me? Hey, yes, yes you do. Is there anything that I would want to give up for it? Maybe? Maybe not? Ugh, I hate being torn. But I should take it because it would be... Here, I actually don't need the Flak Gauntlet because I can block projectiles with Spark Array. And then we're gonna go right back to the same spot. Okay, I take back what I said about it being difficult to intentionally use the shields. The shields just rocked those guys. Okay, maybe it isn't... One of the reasons why I didn't really use Tidal Blast as a signature is because I thought it would be difficult to really line up heavy damage against a boss with it, but maybe not. Owie. I mean, that plan kind of worked, I just thought it was going to knock her out. That time it did. Actually, this, the hardest shield to use has been Wavefront, but Tidal Blast and Aegis Charge have been working out just fine. Hey, come back. <coughs> Pardon me. Alright, I'll just be moving forward. Yeah, some some of Odette's highlights have been, you know, taking the form of a rhinoceros to bash down fortress gates. Obviously, the whole form of silverback gorilla thing in combat has been really effective. But sometimes it's also really effective to take very small forms, like the form of a mouse or like a cockroach or something to get into small places or sneak around.
I completely screwed up. I thought I had an Arcana available when I didn't. See, thing is, the Silverback Gorilla form is good for more than just pummeling. Like, you can use it for climbing as well, because, let's face it, Silverback Gorillas know how to climb. And I'm still looking into, like, other creatures of the natural world. Like, maybe when I need a Charisma bonus, for whatever reason, instead of taking the form of a Golden Retriever, I can take the form of a Capybara. Because everyone loves a Capybara, right? If you don't know what that is, look it up. They are very interesting, very peaceful creatures, and I love them so much. They are, they are the best. Next to birds, of course, but strangely, I haven't actually had a lot of use for becoming a bird. Though if I do need land speed, the top two that I can think of are form of a, form of a cheetah or form of an ostrich or an emu. I mean, they're fast. I don't know. Just having a lot of fun experimenting with this. And if you guys have any interesting ideas on what I could do to really capitalize on the naturalistic forms of a druid, let me know in the, com in the comments below or on my Discord. As far as the run itself, um, I still stand by that wave front is great, but in a really tense situation, it can be hard to use its like, intentionally as a shield. On the other hand, Aegis Charge and Tidal Blast work great for that, re for that reason. And I would, and even though I didn't find it during the run, Cascading Blitz, when it gets upgraded, has a shield that works very well. Like, I'm totally happy to use any of those in a run, but putting a bunch of them together in a run was really fun. That was unintentional rhyming. And I think that's where I'm going to stop now, because I'm just rambling at this point. But thank you guys very much for watching and continuing to support my channel. I appreciate all of you ever so much. I hope you have a fantastic day or night, wherever you may happen to be, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and you take care, everybody.